Hello everyone, it's Leah from Dime Culture, and today what I'm going to be doing is a review on Daniel Smith's dot cards. On today's agenda, I will show you the dot cards. I will also show you each color swatched out, but do not worry, I will not be swatching out all 240 colors, because that would be long and boring. I'm just going to show you the colors themselves, and then pick a few and actually show you them being swatched out. I'm going to explain some stuff about Daniel Smith and then we're going to do some experimenting with the colors and from the experimentation we're then going to move right into a speed painting of these paints in action. So stay tuned for all the exciting stuff that's about to come up. Okay I don't know why I sound and talk like that right now. I might have had too much sugar this morning. Anyways, into the review. <laughs> now, before I get really deep into the review, I just want to say that in the description below, I am going to leave a link to a shorter version of this review itself, uh, one that doesn't have the speed paint attached to it. Um, also, I have just separated the speed painting itself. If you're like, oh, I already know everything about Daniel Smith, let's just see the paint in action, that will be in the description below. Did you hear that snap? Oh my God, I had too much sugar. Anyways. <laughs> um, so let's just get into it. I wrote everything down and I'm just going to start uh, going into it. So these dot cards are labeled as 240 colors, um, which are the Daniel Smith's, uh, almost their full line of their watercolor paint. However, uh, there was a little sticker on my uh, little dot card that said that one of them was intentionally left down, which means technically there was only 239 colors, but really, is that a huge deal? Uh, no, I don't think so, because 239 colors, that's a lot of colors to play with, experiment with, and really get to know Daniel Smith's paints. Now, each dot of paint is labeled with the name of the color, their product number, as well as their ratings and their style. For their ratings, they have their light fastness, if they are staining or non-staining. Um, for their styles, they are, you get informed about whether or not they're granulation, so that is a yes or a no. They also have their transparency levels. Now, if you do see a P next to one of the paint spots, that is because it is from their Primatech line of paints, which means that they use crystals and minerals to create the pigments of the paint. For me, there are several things about Daniel Smith watercolors that have really caught my attention. But one of them that I'm going to be mentioning today is the fact that their paints that are labeled as cadmium hue paints don't actually use cadmium in them. But they are the same colors as traditional cadmium paints without the cadmium, as I just said, and they perform even better for better light fastness. Another thing that really caught my attention and something that I really learned while using these dot cards is just how much pigment goes into their paint. Their paint lasts a really long time. So these dot cards are going to last you a long time. Right now, let me just list out the colors that you have been seeing being swatched out. So I did the Cadmium Yellow Deep Hue, Pyrrole Orange, Perillium Scarlet, Perillion Scarlet, I'm pronouncing that wrong, I think, uh, Carmine, Pyrrole Crimson, Rose of Ultramarine, Cobalt Violet, Amethyst Genuine, Prussian Blue, Spring Green, Graphite Gray, Iridescent Aztec Gold, Duochrome Emerald, Duochrome Cactus Flower, and I'm about to do the Interference Green. Now, let's go into some explanations. Daniel Smith has semi-transparent, transparent, and opaque paints. Uh, but let's start talking about the Prussian Blue because it's listed as a transparent color, but to me, it behaves as a semi-transparent because it has a it can get dark and it also then goes to transparent, just like the other ones, like I'm pointing out right now. 
On the opposite end of that is their graphite gray, which is opaque. And it's a nice opaque. It's matte. It's very dark and thick. You can't even see the dark line through it. But what I did here was I also, you know, watered it down to just see what it would look like. Okay, so let's also look at the specialty paints here. Um, they're, um, you know, the sparkly ones. The ones with all the shine. Oof, that's not in focus. I'm sorry about that. My camera just did not get in focus. But I want to show you here how there is a shine and a shimmer to it. Um, when I was swatching them out, because they are from dried paint, I got really curious to see just how much more shimmer they would be if it came fresh from the tube. Okay, so here I'm going to show you how the Rose of Ultramarine, which looks super vibrant and textural and two-toned on the swatch card, uh, didn't really swatch out the same way when I painted it down. Now, I'm not sure if it's just because I didn't use enough water because it is a granulating paint. So what I'm going to do right here is play with it. I'm going to test it out. That is our next stage of making sure what kind of paints you want is play with it, test it. So here I am seeing if I add more water or if I add it to water, what kind of granulation will I get? Will I get that two-tone once it dries? I'm also going to test out the graphite gray. Now it is listed as a non-granulating paint. However, when I did that one slight, um, slightly diluted look, it looked like it had granulation. So I'm adding a lot of water and I'm just going to test it out. I'm also going to take this color because it's a matte color. I want to see how it mix with other colors basically. So I'm mixing it with their Thalo turquoise because it's a bright and vibrant color and it's very deep color. And let's see how this color mixes together. Will I see the graphite gray through it? Will it just mute it down? So experimenting and seeing what's going to happen. Okay. My camera did cut out, so I didn't show you me painting the third one here, but I will explain it a bit. Oh, a bit. Oh, a little. <laughs> now I'm fumbling over my words. Awesome. Okay. So the Rose of Ultramarine, as you can see with the extra water, it definitely does show that granulation more and make it more of a two-toned color. So you can see that blue underneath. For the graphite gray, it also, with extra water, does show granulations, even though it's not listed as granulating. I also noticed that when I mixed it with the thalo turquoise, you can still see the graphite gray coming through. For the duochrome emerald, I just wanted to see how it looked shimmer-wise on other colors. Okay, let's get to the next stage of experimenting, which is basically mixing your colors. So pick out your colors, and I always suggest getting some of your primary colors, so your yellows, your blues, and your reds, and see what kind of colors those make. Um, what I did was do two versions. I did just pure mixing and then some granulating mixing, which is this small one here, and see how you can actually get really nice colors. And then the next wheel I did was take two colors that I really liked and I then mix them together in different ways. I suggest doing this, especially if you find two colors that are really complementary colors, but just because they complement each other in a way that you look at them visually may not always be harmonious when mixing. So definitely test them out before you purchase them. Because if you're painting flowers, galaxies, really anything, you want to make sure those colors you're going to be layering with each other, mixing with each other, really come out and create dynamic colors. So we're getting into the speed paint. So I'm showing you the paints being used straight from the swatch card. I know you can't actually see it because it's out of frame, but I am taking the paint off of the dot cards. I'm putting it onto a palette just so I can add more water to it. At this point for the speed paint, what I'm gonna do is put on some music and just let you watch and see how the paint itself uh, flows, layers, and works together. And then I'll be right back. Enjoy.
this review so i just want to say thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you so much for sitting through listening to me talk about danny smith's dot cards and for watching the unfolding of this super cute lammy if you have decided that you too want to try these paints out i will leave a link to the dot cards in the description below as well as a link to my blog where I do even more further explanation about the Daniel Smith dot cards. And I just want to say before I officially sign off, if you really like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're really into getting that magical art in your life, subscribe to Dime Culture for more exciting stuff that comes out every Thursday. And until next time, stay magical.